Hello, I'm Anastasios Kirillidis from RiceCS, and this is a short presentation of the IST project, run by colleagues at Rice University, as well as colleagues at ETH in Singapore universities. This work is partially funded by the NSF and the Intel Corporation. At first, let's set up some notation. We consider the problem of neural network training, denoted here abstractly as a box with parameters, over a distributed system with P processing units, often called workers. There is also a communication link between the model and the processing units. Independent subnet training, or IST, is based on the idea of decomposing the original model into a collection of smaller versions to be trained over the clusters. Here, colors indicate a specific decomposition into a collection of weaker versions of the original model. So how IST operates within one iteration? Assume we have already decided the decomposition of the model into, into weaker ones. These models are sent over the communication link to the workers for training, for example, via backpropagation. Here we just see the red box, and this also holds for the other part of the model. Locally, at each worker, worker we could perform independently one or more local updates before these subnetworks are communicated back to the parameter server for reassembly. This is just one iteration of the independent subnet training, or IST. In the next iteration, the algorithm generates new weaker models, okay, compared to the original model. Observe here the different colors that I'm using. Each of these models contains parameters that could have been in various, various subnets in the previous iteration. In other words, per iteration, IST reassembles and randomly regenerates subnets by selecting, combining, and splitting the parameters, the neurons in this particular case of neural network training. This procedure is repeated for several iterations till convergence. Okay. So to help, uh, to help conceptualizing IST, let us highlight some of the differences with the existing distributed protocols. In the case of the data parallel uh, protocol, the whole model is copied and shared to all workers for further updates. When we also do local updates, this is what we actually call local SED or federated averaging variant. On the way back, these updates are shared and aggregated to form the updated model for the next iteration. Key bottleneck here is that the whole model and the updates are shared among the workers uh, that could be a communication and computational overkill. Okay, model parallel approaches alleviate the high communication overhead by sharing computations differently. In most model parallel approaches, data are shared and are common to all workers. Further, the model is, is carefully split among workers. However, a full forward and backward pass includes careful communication among all workers. Model parallel leads to less information shared per iteration, especially when sophisticated pipeline procedures are followed. Yet model parallel is not often used in federated learning scenarios due to the fact that data might be shared among all workers. So to summarize this abstract discussion so far, IST seems to limit memory usage per device because smaller model versions are shared to workers, thus further limiting communication usage. IST seems to handle less strictly the frequency of synchronizations in contrast to model parallelism where exact pipelining is often required. What we will show next also is that IST also results to almost no loss of accuracy and can be applied to settings where distributed computation is mandatory, like federated learning uh, settings. Okay. So just to solidify the IST idea, we would like to be a little bit more specific. Let us consider some examples. This slide considers the MLP case with three th hidden layers. The leftmost part of this slide shows the original model in a, a bottom-up re representation. The right part contains three randomly selected subnetworks. These are weaker versions of the original model and will be trained locally for some iterations before they get reassembled into the original model. Using our box notation, this corresponds to the following representation, where red, green, and blue boxes again represent a smaller version of the original model. Okay. Consider also the case of ResNets. For example, the top row of this figure shows a CNN-based ResNet 
with five residual blocks. Here we subsample some of, um, of these residual blocks uh, to generate two subnetworks, that's the second row of this figure. Observe that the, we could also have overlaps. Some of these residual blocks might be shared among the, uh, the workers. And these subnets get trained locally before they get reassembled, as we see at the last row of this figure. Using our box notation again, the following procedure is repeatedly followed for IST. Okay. Overall, as long as the neural network model can be decomposed in some way, an IST framework could be applied. For example, for the, for the sake of time, similar ideas with different engineering efforts lead to IST for graph convolutional networks or convolutional networks in terms of like filter-wise splitting. Okay. But the question is like, does IST work? To sparkle uh, the audience interest, the short answer is yes. We saw that IST reduces the overall wall clock training time. IST significantly reduces the overall communication overhead compared to classical methods like data parallel, local ICD, or model parallel. As well, IST allows training on larger models where other approaches fail to handle due to memory limitations. So this all look very good. What about some theory to back up this, this nice um, behavior? The answer is that, yes, we have also theoretical results. We have conducted theory for the simple single hidden layer ReLU perceptron case, where IST shows linear convergence rate within a region of uncertainty. Uh, I would like not to go into the details of this theorem due to like a, a lack of time, but what I would like to highlight here is that the theory highlights interesting inter interactions among hyperparameters like overparameterization, step size, number of local iterations, as well as the number of workers that we use in the distributed setting, and how one decides how to split the original network. So to conclude, how can one learn more about the IST? And this is this presentation, the purpose of this presentation is just to sparkle your interest and follow up with them uh, poster presentations that we have for the federated learning uh, in the federated learning workshop. Uh, what we can actually recommend is that we have recently uploaded several works on this project that they're under review, as well as we're working on interesting extensions, as we show um, uh, on this slide. And we can actually share preprints if you like extensions like how IST interacts with the lottery ticket hypothesis idea as well as how IST performs on non-homogeneous distributed settings with non-IAD data, like federated learning. Please visit our project websites for more uh, information and latest updates, and please contact us if you're interested in our idea. Thank you very much.